Are you brand new to emergency preparedness and you're looking to build some disaster food storage really quickly? Well, today we're continuing our Prepper 101 series with how to put together an emergency food box super fast. If you're new here, hi, my name is Brecky and this is Sustainable Prepping, where we empower through preparedness. Now, today we're talking about building a food storage box, and I recommend you actually get a box like this, or even better if you have an opaque box. And this is going to be disaster or emergency food storage box. Now, this is not long-term food storage. This is not my layering methods for food storage. This is your first stopgap food storage. If you are starting completely from ground zero, this is where I recommend you begin. We're gonna be doing it by creating a three meal a day plan for seven days. And then we're going to be adding to that putting it all in a singular box, right? That's how we have it. And that way you have what's called dedicated food storage. Now, dedicated food storage is different than having a working pantry. And I wanna make that really clear. While you can incorporate your pantry, your fridge and freezer into your food storage, this is all about having that box that you set aside you set it all up and then you check it every six months to a year and it's dedicated. You're not going in and using it. This way, when a disaster happens, you can either grab the box and take it with you if you need to evacuate, or you know that no matter how bare your pantry is, maybe you haven't gone grocery shopping, maybe you just got back from a trip, maybe you are um, kind of eating through stuff in your pantry for some kind of challenge and then bam, all of a sudden an emergency happens, this is dedicated food storage. This is a great first step, and this is where you can uh, build, you can add, you can grow, but this is all very low bar of entry foods. Little caveat, for those of you who already have a pretty good pantry, and if you have good cooking skills, feel free to adjust this with a lot more of those basic raw ingredients. Things like lentils, things like real rice, things like flour or a pancake mix. If you are somebody who already keeps a lot of these things on hand, you're comfortable with them, go ahead and use those for your basic food storage. If you're not, and that's who I'm targeting, folks who maybe don't have a lot of kitchen savvy, folks who maybe rely on meal kits or eating out a fair amount, this is going to be a plan that is ideal for you. Now, I'm not gonna walk you through how to build your plan completely. If you are interested, I actually offer a course on how to put together an entire month of food storage using this concept as the base, but certainly with a lot more detail. But this is a really easy way to get seven days worth of food storage. And again, you double, triple, quadruple, it to have some dedicated food storage. Everything is going to be conventionally made. So this means it's going to be something you can pick up at the grocery store, not special ordered online, or you don't have to learn how to dehydrate, freeze dry, or can your own foods. If you learn to do those things, great, add those in, but don't feel like you have to do that to get started. You're gonna start with seven breakfasts, seven lunch, seven dinners, plus seven days worth of snacks, and I recommend seven days worth of desserts or a small sweet treat. You're gonna to wanna to also include drinks you drink on a regular basis. Now some preppers are gonna tell you, you also need to worry about your macros, making sure you're getting enough proteins, making sure you're getting a diversity of fruits and vegetables, things like that. For a seven day, even a two week meal plan, I really don't think that's important. Seven days to two weeks, on unless you already have a pre-existing condition that you have to manage with food, is not going to make or break your health. Just add in a multivitamin to your box and you've got those bases covered. Even if you're in a slight caloric deficit, you're going to be okay for seven days to two weeks. If you're looking at building a long-term food storage plan, or looking at a 30-day, 90-day, six-month food storage plan, that's when those bigger level pieces come into play. But if you are brand new and just getting started, take that off your plate for worry. Right now we want ease and the low bar of entry, getting this box set up that you can always add to and adjust as time goes on. You have your box. I'm gonna set it over here off camera. Now we're gonna do seven days of breakfasts. My recommendation is that you do the easiest option that appeals to you. Most of us eat the same one or two things for breakfast five days a week. At least in my family, my kids eat literally the same breakfast Monday to Friday, and then it's Saturday and Sunday where we mix it up. You could do the same approach, or you could just do seven days of the same breakfast or the same kind of breakfast. So for example, we have a Costco membership and we get this giant box of different varieties of oatmeal. Now, can I make oatmeal myself? Yes, in fact, I keep a lot of oats on hand. I prefer homemade oatmeal. But this is easy because it's pre-packaged, right? 
to have it pre-packaged in different flavors. This box comes with three different flavors. So this box actually comes with three flavors, apple cinnamon, maple brown sugar, and cinnamon spice, but my kids have already eaten all the apple cinnamon ones, so we only see two here. Um, but what you could do is, for every member of your family, figure out how many packets they eat for a full serving. So for example, my two little girls only eat one, but my husband likes to have two in a serving. So you just calculate that out, stick them in a Ziploc or a couple of Ziplocs so that they're airtight, and you have the easiest possible breakfast. Now, I do recommend that with breakfast, you do something like oatmeal or grits or cream of wheat. You could even do pancakes if you wanna make that kind of a mess, though it's a lot of effort to do seven days a week. But you're gonna probably be boiling water for coffee or tea in the morning. Most Americans drink coffee. So if you're gonna be boiling water anyway, you just boil a little bit more and you have a hot stick to your ribs kind of breakfast. So my recommendation is something like oatmeal or grits, and then you just six, seven, or you know 28 or however many people are in your family into a couple of Ziplocs and boom. It's that easy to get your breakfasts all sorted out. If you are someone who is worried about having more calories in something like your oatmeal and making sure you get enough protein and fats, you could add in some kind of nut butter. We have peanut butter here, but you could add in almond butter, sunflower butter, cashew butter, whatever you like, and add that in. The only thing is you do wanna make sure you are rotating that nut butter because it will go rancid before a lot of your other items will. So just keep that in mind. If you're storing something like this in a garage where it can get very hot, you're gonna to wanna to rotate your nut butters even more quickly because again the oils in there will go rancid so just keep that in mind so have yourself seven breakfasts again i would automate this have the same thing every morning and make it low barb entry if you can warm up hot water and mix it in it makes your life easier the next meal of the day is going to be lunch and this is where you're going to really hone in on what kind of fuel sources you believe you're going to have my assumption is that you're going to have the ability to at least heat water and boil things but if you only have a minimal amount of fuel or you're dealing with a very hot environment you might want to look at a cold lunch in which case you could do something like this this is a canned chili there are all kinds of pre-canned soups that are not condensed don't get condensed those have to be heated up and have water mixed in this could be eaten straight from the can or minimally heated if you needed to um, one of the reasons why I don't recommend things like peanut butter and crackers or uh, having spreads and crackers is that crackers can get broken and go stale. And unless you're comfortable baking your own bread and you can bake your own bread in a grid down situation where maybe your utilities are out, that is not something I would rely on. So I like things like this for people who have um, limited kitchen skills. You're not gonna make, get those kitchen skills overnight, y'all. It's gonna take practice. But this can be put in there and used right away. You can heat it up or you can eat it cold. If you do know you're gonna be packing enough fuel to uh, heat things up three meals a day, you could also add in something simple and hearty and also kind of emotionally fulfilling like having mac and cheese. You get your dairy in, and again, it's hard to store cheese unless you're paying for dried powdered cheese or expensive freeze-dried cheese. So having that in as a lunch you can look forward to or any boxed meal like this um, is a great way to go, but you do have to heat up that water. Additionally, you could make the mac and cheese in the morning and then just eat it cold and a couple of hours later. Is it ideal? No. Is it an option? Yes. So my recommendation again, this is to get a quick seven days packed, is to get pre-made lunches of a bunch of different varieties based on what you and your family will actually eat and actually like. Now dinners is where it's really gonna depend again on your cooking skill and your preferences. You could do things like canned meat. This is a bunch of canned tuna that you could turn into casserole. If again, you have the skills to cook over a, an open fireplace or you have some kind of way to um, cook, you could turn this into a casserole. You could eat this as like a tuna salad and store a little bit of mayonnaise. Again, mayonnaise can be shelf stable until you open it, keep an eye on your expiration dates. You could decide to go for some um, different canned items to make soup and have soup two nights in a row that you just store and reheat. Um, you could totally do that if that's something that you are confident in making. But if you are like some of my friends and you don't have a lot of kitchen savvy or you're concerned that that much fuel to be making three meals like that a day is gonna be limited, 
My suggestion is to have a bunch of these pre-packaged meals. If you need to make only two hot meals a day, I would suggest planning your breakfast so you can heat up water for coffee, tea, whatever, and then you have a nice hot breakfast. Um, and then you have a cold lunch of some kind. You could even cook part of it at breakfast time, have a cold lunch, and then have a hot dinner. Um, if you don't know that you can have a hot dinner or you're gonna have to have a minimal amount of fuel in the evenings, these pouches can be easily warmed they can be eaten cold. Are they ideal cold? They are not, but you can still eat them that way. This is like a Spanish rice. Let me see if you can see that. This is like a Spanish rice and you can get plain rice in these kinds of pouches. You can get all kinds of different flavors of meals. I get big boxes of these from Costco, but Trader Joe's and lots of places have these. Now, individually, these are quite expensive. I think they're like three bucks per pouch if you're buying them individually. I think it is like $10 for eight if I buy them at Costco. So just do some shopping, try some out before you invest in a whole bunch if you've never had them before. But this could be a great way to get some diversity of flavors. You'd wanna pair it with rice. Um, you could also use regular rice. You could pack a jar of regular rice or a air sealed bag of regular rice if you're someone confident in making rice over open flame. Remember that you can't assume you'll have your utility. So all of your foods need to be something that you can make over whatever your backup fuel source supply is going to be. But I think these are just a really great way to quickly get calories that are storable. You don't have to repackage them. You don't have to uh, do a lot of cooking to make them edible. You don't have to do a lot of prep. You don't have to store the spices. They're very easy. So where you can have something very similar here, I could make a lentil curry with these. I would have to also store all the seasonings and I'd have to store uh, the rice and such, and then cook all of this. Whereas my pouch that I was storing in my box of stuff is all the spices ready to go. So that's just something to think about. If you are someone who has a small space, those pouches are gonna save space. If you are someone who is a digital nomad and you travel, you live in an RV, you live out of your car a lot, creating a smaller box with those lighter options might be ideal for you. And we're gonna go into some of that small space preparedness later on this year. Some other options to add variety are things like instant mashed potatoes, any kind of add water and mix. Are these the healthiest option? No, they are not. And I understand people who don't love these, but for their the amount of effort they are, the fact that all you have to do is heat up water and you might already be heating up water, you could get some kind of meat. I would go with chicken or beef if you're a meat eater, uh, mashed potatoes. Then you add in your vegetable of choice, a can of green beans, for example, and you have a meat in three, very simple, very low effort. Your dinner, for me and my family, is where I would add in some kind of vegetable. You don't wanna totally forget your veggies, even though it's an emergency. You wanna have some kind of vegetable. You also wanna have some kind of fruit. You could have fruit at lunch, you could have fruit with dinner, however works best for you guys. You can do, you know, jars of applesauce. This is in glass. You could choose plastic or those smaller individual containers if that's the right choice for your family. Got things like pears that we keep on hand. You know, have a variety. Don't just do all applesauce unless that's the only thing you like. Another recommendation that I have is things like mandarin oranges. Even just one can a week, making sure you get a good pop of vitamin C. Um, you can also store vitamin C powder if you would like to spice up your water. We just want to make sure we're getting lots of vitamin C. In a disaster, you're probably going to be stressed. Your immune system is going to be depressed. And so a boost of vitamin C that you go ahead and plan for will help you kind of work against any of that stress and depression on your immune system. All right, so with your dinner meal, you're adding in things like fruit and some veggies, making sure you get some into at least one meal a day. Again, this is not going to be gourmet, but you need to think about your drinks next. I've already mentioned that a lot of folks drink coffee every morning, so plan to put in some freeze-dried coffee. Your coffee maker might not work. So I would suggest freeze-dried because you can leave it for a whole year without worrying about it going rancid. You can get little jars like this from Trader Joe's, or you can go to Costco, Sam's Club, any kind of big box store and get the big like taster's choice and just stick it in there. Even if you don't drink freeze-dried coffee regularly, even if you don't like freeze-dried coffee, your ground coffee may go rancid, you may go through it already, um, you may not have enough heat to do a French press or a pour over. This is pretty quick and easy 
and you don't need a lot to make a cup of coffee. So I would suggest having your coffee and going for freeze dried. You could also store some boxes of tea. If you do get tea like this, I would put them in a Ziploc bag or I would seal them with a, a food saver of some kind just to get the air out to keep them as fresh as possible. So if you drink black tea or chai or even an herbal tea that you enjoy, go ahead and add them in. You're going to be drinking a lot of water and not having a lot of access to other things. So this could be an easy way to spice up the water that you're drinking to make it more interesting during your week of food storage disaster preparedness. Other drink things to think about are things like hot cocoa, which could double as a treat in the evening for your kids, or with breakfast, add some more calories, add a little bit of something special during a time that's very challenging. So you could add things like hot cocoa or other powdered mixes. If you like malta milk, things like that, you know your family. The other thing I would add is some kind of rehydration powder. If you're having to do a lot of domestic labor to repair your home because it's been damaged or to work on cleaning up your neighborhood because it's been damaged or you're doing a lot of physical labor around cutting firewood to heat your home or to cook your food, you might find you're sweating a lot. So something, I like these because they are individually packaged. You're less likely to see them get clumpy. Um, you could do Gatorade, you could do Powerade, you could do any brand that you like, but as long as it's a rehydration powder, I would put at least enough for everybody to have one a day into your kit. This is gonna, again, give you some diversity in your flavor for what you're drinking, but also offer some rehydration that's already balanced for you. Finally, we come to our desserts and snacks section. And this can be really whatever you enjoy that is shelf stable. So for example, if y'all are a granola bar family, maybe everybody gets a granola bar as their mid-morning snack or a snack alongside lunch. These are pre-packaged and most of these have a year long shelf life. You can buy them in bulk again from any kind of big box store, even places like Walmart will have these in a bulk deal. So something like this is great. It's a little bit sweet. So maybe it could also double as a dessert. If you pack a nut butter, this is a very high protein, high fat snack if you're worried about those things. So something like a granola bar could be a good snack. Other sweet treats are things like these little baked cookies. Um, they're really just a cookie. I don't know why they're advertised as a breakfast cookie. It's a cookie, but they are individually packaged four to a pack. And as long as they don't get crushed, again, keeping an eye on their expiration dates, these should last about a year before they go stale. Not another sweet treat that might be nice to have, especially if you already eat them. If you're worried about getting enough protein, this is where something like a protein bar can come in handy. Watch the expiration dates. Again, some of these have fats that don't last a whole year. So keep that in mind, but this is a great way to bulk up your protein, give yourself something sweet, um, and just make sure getting plenty of calories if that's something you're concerned about. You of course can pack things like protein powder mixes and just mix it with water if you already drink that. But let me give you a caveat. Uh, as somebody who drinks a lot of protein powder because I do lift weights, protein powder can mess with your stomach if you're not used to drinking it. So if you've never used protein powder, don't store it for an emergency without trying it. You don't wanna have stomach distress with foods you're not used to. So all of these things should be things that you've already eaten more than once. So you know that it's not gonna mess up your stomach. Other desserts or snack options can be things like special freeze-dried blueberries. You just don't want them to get crushed, but freeze-dried fruit treats. Again, you're getting fruit, but it also feels really special. Um, you can add in little fruit snacks like this. These you can buy in huge quantities and just add a ton in. And as long as they don't get overheated and melt, these are a lovely, yummy little snack. Quick calories, quick uh, carbohydrates if you're doing a lot of physical labor and I know my kids think that these are really special. If you're someone who knows you're going to have access to pretty steady fuel you can th pack things like popcorn not in the bags but just regular popcorn. You will need to make sure you have a fat on hand. I would suggest coconut uh, oil as your fat of choice has the longest shelf life. You can get a small jar and just leave it in your bat in your storage box. And again, once a year or once every six months, you should go through, take everything out that's going to expire, replace it with fresh stuff. Um, then it can just be eaten, stuff that you eat. 
You can add things like jam. You can add things like crackers as long as they don't get cracked and destroyed. You can put those sorts of things in here. Just remember, the whole point of this box is not to be comprehensive six months sheltering in place. There's a whole bunch of videos that I will make sure get linked both in the cards and in the description if you want to build a really holistic food storage plan. This food storage box that we are putting together is meant to be a quick start box if you are brand new to preparedness. So if you have someone who says, I don't have room for six months, where am I gonna store all these things? I don't know how to do it. Putting together a box like this is really easy. You can store this in your closet. You could get a flatter box. You can get like two flat ones that you store underneath a bed if you need to. And then you have seven days or you could double this and have 14 days worth of easily accessible low bar of entry food that you know that you know how to make. You don't have to learn any cooking skills, right? We're lowering that learning curve so that you have accessible, easy, easy to obtain and easy to make disaster food. Couple quick things that you can add to your box that aren't essential, but might be nice to have stored with your emergency food. And that'd be things like salt, pepper, and other spices. Now, if you keep these things in your house, you probably will have plenty for one week. But if you wanna be a little bit ahead of that preparedness curve, go ahead, buy a new salt, a new pepper, maybe a new mixed Italian or mixed chili spices, and just add them into your box. That way, if something happens and your pantry is not available or you're grabbing your box to go, you can just take the whole box and you can stick it in your car and you have everything right there. Now, the last thing to note is that if you're doing a lot of things like pasta or dried rice, we're going to need to be cooking them from scratch. They're not pre-cooked and all you're really doing is warming them up. Or if you do decide to invest in freeze dried or dehydrated food as a part of your emergency one to two week box, then you're gonna to need to add in the rehydration water to whatever water calculations you're using. If you're using the standard one gallon per person per day, which is what I recommend to begin with, you might wanna add an extra quart or even half gallon of water to your calculations if you're using a lot of dried or freeze dried food. And if you're gonna be using a lot of dried beans, for example, like if that is a part of your plan, you definitely want to be adding quite a bit of water to your everyday cooking water allotment because they do go through quite a bit of water. So if you are using dried or dehydrated foods, please keep that in mind, right? Freeze dried, dehydrated foods will absorb much more water. These conventional foods, right? already have the liquid cooked inside, which is why I recommend them to get started. They already have the liquid, they're already inside, it's a very low bar of entry. But just wanted to keep that in mind. All right, friends, this is my basic box for one individual person. You probably would need a bigger box if you're looking to do a family or a couple of boxes, but this is meant to get you started. It's not perfect. It's not the most nutritious, and it is certainly not the plan you want in place for six months of food storage. However, if you are brand new and you need an easy way to go to the store and make your box, this is the way to do it. Seven days of breakfast, seven days of lunch, seven days of dinner, snacks, desserts, don't forget some fruit and veggies thrown in and some coffee, maybe some tea or other powdered drinks. This is just a super easy way for you to get started super fast. Comment down below and let me know what you would add. What would you put in a easy low bar of entry box? What is in your emergency box? And do you do an emergency food disaster box? We don't actually do it as a box anymore. I've upgraded because I do have about six months of food storage and I've just changed it. But when I got started, I did do it this box style. So it's a great beginner's first step. And this is all food that I would eat anyway. So if I wanted to upgrade and I wanted to do a big one month program, then I would just integrate this into my pantry and go from there. So everything I recommend is stuff that you already should be eating, should be testing out. Hope you guys are all doing well. If you are interested in learning about your lighting for your emergency, you want to know how to get those lights on. If the power is out, what is essential and what isn't, check out this video right here. It's all about preparedness lighting. And that way, maybe if you have enough room, you can add a couple headlamps to your box and you'll be ahead of the game. Until the next video, y'all, happy prepping.